Can I introduce you? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell Elaine is very shy. <laughs> Welcome to Hashuka Hit. The Alaska State Museum, established in 1900, is on Tlingit Ani, Tlingit land. Um, the Akwan Tlingit people have been here for thousands of years, and we hope to be good guests on their land. It's my great pleasure to introduce you to Rektenga Elaine Kingyuguk. Elaine is here studying the museum collection and sharing knowledge about her Siberian Yupik culture. Her travel was funded through a grant called Access to Alaska Native Collections, courtesy of Museums Alaska and the Siri Foundation. This presentation is part of the programming for our summer exhibition, Visceral, Verity, Legacy, Identity, Alaska Native Gut Knowledge and Perseverance. Elaine has a gut basket in the show this summer. Uraktenga Elaine Kingyuguk is a bilingual artist, dancer, and culture bearer from the village of Savunga on St. Lawrence Island in the Bering Sea. She specializes in dolls, gut baskets, toddler regalia, ornaments, and jewelry made from customary St. Lawrence Island Yupik materials. Ms. Kinyiguk has coll collaborated with museums such as the Smithsonian Arctic Study Center and the Cordova Museum to repair gut parkas for exhibition. She was also part of the Smithsonian Arctic Study Center Materials Tradition Series about sewing gut, and those videos are available on YouTube. During this presentation, Elaine will begin by explaining some images of her work, followed by a performance of Yupik dance and song in the Siberian Yupik language. After the presentation, you may join Elaine in the front of the room to see some of her work up close and in person. Please join me welcoming Rektenga Elaine Kinyuguk. Nice so, we'll Thank you. Start with um, a map here with you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What? What do I do? I was, so you can tell people, uh, get people oriented where you are from. Okay. I don't have a point. Oh, I'll use this one. It's way up there. <laughs> when I used to teach, I used to look around and say, as the tallest person, can you please get me that? That's where I'm from, Sibunga. And uh, up there, in Gambo. There's only two vil villages there, although there used to be more villages on the island. Mm -hmm. Talk about this a little? Sure, yeah, this is how we know each other. Mm -hmm. We met at uh, I met him at, uh, I was on another trip. Um, I, uh, I was home after my other good friend passed. The, my friend sent me, oh, uh, Anna Hoover, the photographer that I met over the years, um, arranged for me to go places. So we went to Homer and I was in the museum. They set up, up something like this for me. And then that's where I met Dennis. And Dennis said, uh, um, if, you, if I get a grant, would you come and clean and repair this uh, regalia, raincoat regalia? So I said, yeah, he communicated. He got grant real fast, <laughs> so he called me a year after uh, on the, his passing. I went, and that's where I met Ellen and her husband. And uh, I was saying, I asked them. Dennis said, "We're going to have a conference, a um, uh, museum people conference." Would you like to be a part of that? And I said, um, maybe not. I was thinking about, I might not want to. Don't you think, um, I, am I going to be there for uh, repair? Why don't I just go for that? And then when I got there, I knew, heard it was called the Angel Project Conference. And I said, oh, 
I should do this in memory of my friend Thomas. I asked Dennis. I could do, I could volunteer everything else from the people who want to ask me my time. Go ahead and I'll be a part of it. Only if you dedicate that conference in memory of him. Because when I heard Angel, it was like him saying, Elaine, you should do this. <laughs> anyway, and that's when I met him. And he was uh, making the um, what you, what, mannequin. mannequin. And it was cool. <clears throat> And uh, that same summer when I went home, knowing that I'm going to go to Homer and uh, other places that she had me lined up to right now, I wasn't at home going fishing. I did do a, a work on a lot of, uh, you know, gut. I was beach combing. I, in that beach, I didn't know whether they find anything or not. So while I was beach homing, there was a b mount sand about that big. And I was walking and there was a stream. And then I thought I saw a bone or a rock that looked like an eye. I was going towards it. And w when I got real close to it, I was thinking, what if it's a scraper? Wouldn't that be nice? Because I was thinking about him. A lot of times I'm not sad. I'm, what if it is? Because I'm going to be going to Homer and wherever. I went there. I took it out. <gasps> it was a small scraper my size. <laughs> and I said, my gift. <laughs> And the, see, I do a lot of work, all the gut, uh, and uh, wh the white part is uh, more like a formal regalia outfit or for windbreaker. The clear one is for, more for rain, rainy day. And, uh, and the plain white ones are for winter time when they are going uh, winter hunting or go, I, uh, ice hunting. So, you know, uh, on dog team, you see how big the island is when they have to go when the weather breaks. Maybe some time ago, it used to get, on St. Lawrence, they get super white out. And sometimes they get lost. And they have to make a shelter and then uh, the, in the museum, there'll be bands like here or over here, and it will make you survive. <laughs> and the raincoats are, you go kayaking, and uh, when it gets too bad, you go in your kayak and you use that to cover so the water won't go in, and you wait, stay in there until it calms down, you come out and you paddle again. <laughs> Some of the different materials. That one way up there is a ball. I was putting together a ball. Polar bear, uh, leather for boots, white leather up here. And this one is a commercial but uh, they used to find, well, they used to use willow and it would turn that color. And this is bark that they find or they import that from Siberia. Relatives, they trade a lot. Whatever they don't have on Siberia and the islanders have it, they trade. And a lot of, they didn't have money, they mostly trade. And I like to do that too. When when I when I used to do tables, I go to, or I go buy their outfit after I make a sale. Hmm. Right now, uh, since the pandemic, besides 
people who know how. In both Gamble and Savunga, there's like two or three people living who makes the leather. And during, since the pandemic, nobody had made any leather or even mukluk soles. It, it, luckily, b before the pandemic, I was drying gut. And then when I heard about pandemic, I got scared. I was going to throw it away, paranoid, but I finished it. And um, Amy called me and I made a mask. Probably it's here, is it? We don't have it right now. Not right now. A little portion of the picture, I have it in my camera. But I made it with a bib. Uh, uh, when she called me, uh, uh, she was asking certain ar artists to make masks. I was thinking, I told her, I don't know what to make it out of. I know in long ago in the old days they never wore masks, but I could make it out of gut because I do a lot of gut. I was going to do only this part, then I thought of doing the. Um, I remember my grandma used to make the Russian hoods. The Russians they didn't have, they had parkas with no hoods. They had hoods with the, like the Canadians, front and back bib. And only on this side, they have a design, nothing in the uh, front. And the front will be white with fur and all decorated. And then I decided to put everything over the years. I started sewing when I was six years old, and, and now I'm 65. She could... Uh, <coughs> you could... It's small right here. Maybe uh, you could come to Amy and see it. Everything uh, uh, after you could probably see. I used everything. When she asked me, I felt so honored. I, always, I, feel, I, I always feel, uh, I feel welcomeness wherever a land I go to. And uh, uh, when I first went to Hawaii, my eyes couldn't get enough. And I kept saying, they, they call this paradise. I wonder how paradise look like. I, my eyes, for a whole week, I couldn't believe my eyes. And I felt so felt. And, uh, and then, uh, when I went to go see my son in Phoenix, I stepped on different ground. I'd never been to Lower 48. Was I so grateful to set my foot on Lower 48? And that evening, I felt something. I felt welcomed by people that I didn't know. I'm real close to spirit, whatever, good. And then I came here, and I always ask, like to ask before permission from people before I do anything. I ask permission to repair that gut parka, because when I was repairing that gut parka at Smithsonian, I felt like a sur surgeon. I know it wasn't a person. I felt he, whoever used it, used it for hunting because when they go hunting, probably people from all over long ago, they give their, they give themselves to the people, even if they, you know, Bering Sea is from St. Lawrence Island, the, the, the most de deadliest, you may watch deadliest catch. Try go hunting on St. Lawrence Island, and you know how it's in between Alaska and Russia, the current and the weather. They give themselves up, and there's a ice fog. Before CB, they use uh, flags, and the old men are up there. They're like traffic cops looking out at the ice and say, 
they flag them long ago to go this way and direct them to come home. And then when they got CB, they do something else. I keep looking at the time in case I might. <laughs> um, older baskets don't uh, have uh, animal figures, but I, I started uh, putting uh, figures of the animals. These are my mom's basket. I learned from her. Uh, learning how to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, learning how to sew this material when the first time. It's like trying to make something out of tissue paper. <laughs> I, my mama w was always making dolls. I really want to try. I already learned uh, quite a few things already by then. Uh, um, and I never done, uh, got, when she go out or go somewhere, I, she's doing a sleeve or a body. I try. I ask her, "Can you teach me?" And she said, "No, I don't have patience like you. I'm not an educator." Because if she, when she tried to teach me other things, she would grumble. And I said, "Please don't talk to me that way." <laughs> but it, but it it's not overnight learning. It takes uh, a while. <clears throat> what is this? One? Oh. See, uh, even processing, uh, getting it ready for ball or yo-yos or for dolls, you have to trim, you have to stretch, and uh, and for mucklucks and soles, you have to do a lot of different things. Like for the in-between leather on my boot, you have to find on the end, like sharpening a knife, you know, it has to be like this, where you're going to sew on before you flip it like this, this part, like this, or oh, I don't know. This end has to be uh, shaved, um, you have to take the excess out so it will be like this, so it'd be waterproof and it'd be easier to the needle. Imagine that they used to use uh, ivory needle and use seal oil lamp. <laughs> and the uh, hardest, the smaller they are. And only uh, once in a great while I make, uh, I started these about before the pandemic, and finally I finished them. They're meant to be for here. So I have them over there. <laughs> this little guy, he's the size of the Ninja Turtle. My mom made the boots, the clothing. He's, he's like, a, he's, parka is like Russian parka with no wood. The hairstyle used to be like that, like the monks. Lots of people asked me, and I said, I don't know. Do they learn from the monks? I don't know. Maybe, and I think, maybe, uh, I don't mean you think. They didn't have scissors. They only had knives. Probably, in St. Lawrence Island, they say they don't grow the hair because they're not going to survive. You know it's too rough. One minute, good. One minute, uh, the current, the waves will be this high, especially from Bunguk to the mainland. On St. Lawrence Island, there's on the, the east side, there's this little island where there used to be people. That's the strongest. The waves get this high, and they go down, and they have <laughs> boats like this big, that speed boats that they started using. 
but long ago they used skin boats. Skin boats were much safer. And it's like, <sighs> my mom said, no choice. They were going to run out of water. They had to come back to the mainland, even if they say the other boat is up here and the other one is way down there. It's, I know dangerous catch is very dangerous, but 18 lunts, 18 footers are right now they use them, but they use 16 footers too. But you know how big the skin boats were, like they're much bigger. They were much safer. When I was a little girl, we go on skin boat. And on the, you know, the skin boat about this high or higher. And when they we're going to camp, when it get rough, there's the attachments they put up here. There are canvas. By the time I was growing up, they were canvas. Long ago, they were uh, gut. And they put them, and they were called kulikh, so the water wouldn't splash and get the kids wet. And for those of us who are little, little, they let us go sit where the steerer is. And when I was a little girl, by that time, the skin boats, either they have a sail, and in the middle part there would be where they put in the Ibn root. And they would bring us by Ibn root. <laughs> I never sailed until I was working maybe Five years before I resigned my job, uh, I went south side for whaling. I, uh, the school let me take work for two weeks, and luckily I got work and video recorded uh, sailing, and that was my first time sailing. It was fun. <laughs> and he's, this one is the bigger one. That one is wearing a lower a uh, higher one, and he's wearing an ankle size one. And first time I tried a meat hook, that one up there is a meat hook. Uh, meat hook, different meat hook, you know. And when I lived in Anchorage, um, an antique gallery owner one gave me an artifact if I could draw what's there. And I did. I'm glad he let me. So I was able to carve a little miniature hook. When I was putting together, I didn't know maybe 10 years after that, I'm going to not only teach, I'm going to be asked to go smithing and, and uh, everything in our lives is put together. And somebody let us hear and we learn and we do something. And now I'm working. I'm going to help myself by helping them. And I, but there are some things I have to ask my community. It's a, and, if, and it might be overwhelming for me to do it, so I only do it. Uh, what, what Anchorage is going to do is they're going to, all the collections they got, they're going to send me to me, and I'm going to record everything and you pick information I know of that thing for my kids, for, the, for our educators. And meantime, I'm volunteering to teach song. Take a little break from that one. Spear fight. Like I didn't have spear. I could do, I learned spear fighting. I learned traditional exercising. In our camp, there's a traditional, our camp is a traditional ground from generations. So when there's tourists, uh, we never bring them to our camp yet. But maybe in the future, we will do. There's a model of the playground there. There's a old exercising. It's like that. We have a traditional playground there where my great-grandmother played as a little girl when there are people 
all over the island used to live. They were going somewhere to the east side and they stopped by there and the girls brought her to the playground and played. And years later, when all the other villages on the island died off, she, her first husband died. They moved to Sibunga uh, after Sibunga was built. And then uh, her, when her husband died, the next in kin became her husband. And they, he built a cabin. And he told his son, when people used to live here, the girls brought me to that playground. And her second husband's, my step-grandfather's place. Now these two guys, <clears throat> I need water. <clears throat> Maybe you can say something a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so um, a lot of the dolls that Elaine has um, made are collaborative works, like with her mother and with her late partner, Thomas. So Thomas had done the carving of the ivory hands and the ivory faces. Um, and so this these dolls are, are collaborative with um, loved ones of Elaine's. Yeah. That doll was the biggest doll. Uh, this doll was one of the first ones he made, you know, over the years he learned. I don't know whether you guys know of my uncle Floyd, King Eagle. He, he and his wife were doll makers. My uncle Floyd's heads were really detailed. Uh, my auntie's clothes were as detailed as me and my... I learned how to make miniature um, dolls. Amelia's work was doll-like clothing. They weren't detailed like this. There are only few of them were detailed because she didn't have enough material. My mom used to have lots of material. Her and one of my aunties would work together and make material. It's not easy to make leather. Le leather is the hardest one to do. You gotta let the hair fall off and it's real stinky and you gotta clean it and clean it, change the water and get all the, and until it's smelling good. Even walrus is much harder. Seal is better. Polar bears, the first part is the sink stinky. And the next part, if you put it in water, it's a lot better. And that was, was a lady. So that, he was this big, the biggest doll we made. And he reminded me of my grandpa's big cheeks. <laughs> he looked like my grandpa. So, and we called, he's in the book, we called him, in English, he's called the chosen one, Nekmikka. Long ago, um, our people used to, uh, choose people it for if they wanted uh, a person to be educated from everything in the lifetime they say once in a lifetime like I asked my great uncle like the Dalai Lama and he said he talked about judges lawyers doctors of physical doctors of the sky, doctors of the sea, professors, I call them doctors. He said once in their lifetime they raise one person from infant. All these scholars teach this child to be pure and they teach him mind, physical healing and has to be good and if it has to be pure. And if this child become an adult or something, uh, did something wrong, 
he will be disqualified. So they start another one. So once in a lifetime, they would be able to uh, uh, so that's what the name we came up with. And this one, my dolls, I named them after my uh, ancestors who were athletic. And this one is the spear fighter, his uh, Bazak, who was a spear fighter. And uh, they exercised him w with his legs and his brother to be strong. And this one has a reindeer face. My girlfriend, who is older than me, we grew up together. Our grandmas took us berry picking. Our grandma sewed a lot. And uh, our father side moms. And they grew up together themselves. Uh, my mom gave the material to her, and I think this one too. I showed her how to mold and make f tattoo faces, and all she did was draw a little bit tattoos here. And then when she gave me the material for helping her with her dad in Anchorage when they were he was ill, I said, "You don't have to do it. No, I want to. I want you to finish these." And You'll see them over here. This is reindeer uh, material, and that's seal. And uh, that's, uh, she, see, my mom and uh, uh, my work, my great aunt, she taught us how to do the, those. And that's not easy, too. If I... Uh, Take, like I tell everybody, I'm going to work on the hood, especially the second one. Nobody bother me, please, because if I let it go, I have to, like a crab, I hold on to it. I don't let go until I'm ready to let go, or I have to try and finish it. Because if I let go, I'm going to even up everything again, and it's so hard to sometimes. And this is from the artifact, my mom's. It was a medallion uh, that you put on. You know, our people, we have in this world, we have similar cultures from, from our home and way over on the other side of the world. We may be in different culture, and we may have lots of different culture wherever we come, but there's only few of them are real common. Like, um, I'll give you two examples. One of them is, you know, this was a medallion, and a man put it on right here, sew it on. Those two slits are where the slits were they sew it on. And uh, just like the Chinese Samoan warriors that fight like a monkey, fight like a tiger, this man fights like a crab. <laughs> Once we get a hold of his enemy, he will not let go. Because our people used to say, when uh, some people, they would exercise from different community, and they used to have Olympic stuff and whatever not. And then those days it was legal to fight till you the death. And those people who don't want to kill is what the, they wear. And if the spear fighters heard about this one and he see him with that, he might go away. Or when they see him coming, he would loosen up. You know, when you're basketball, you do stuff to loosen up. They do. We have stories like there was a, a young man who got married from Siberia, and uh, a young girl. Their clan had come back later. They asked him to come. You're going to suffer or come from my clan. They said, come. You're going to suffer. We're doing real good here. 
some of our clan members already came quite some time ago to St. Lawrence Island. And then they came. And then one of the girls, before the Iron Curtain was closed, they used to have a big Olympic and gamble. All the villagers would gather. Anyway, that time. And then um, uh, they do that. I'm going a little bit brain dead, <laughs> but let's go on. Uh, the ones with uh, more work, like the crab and these figures, because I draw on leather and I embroider. Those I do once in a while, like I do the uh, little earrings. They're very time consuming. I don't want to make a whole bunch because they're too expensive too. And that work. So, good timing. <laughs> and then uh, I'll do uh, probably. Uh, I'll do a, uh, like I already did a, a play teaching uh, thing. And then maybe I'll go ahead and do, uh, I don't know if you guys know anything about the comedy players. I'm doing, I told her, I'm doing this. It's once in a lifetime. Why not? I have all my stuff. Who knows how long I'm going to live? Who knows how, how much I know is going to be passed on? Who knows one of these days, one of you guys will meet my grandchildren. I have three of them, one adopted off, two girls at home. And my cousin's families are my family too. And you might and sometimes meet them and say, I've heard them. Sing. I'll do a, you know, Winter time before TV, they do we, they do games, and then uh, I'll do a, for the younger kids again. They do with two hands, and uh, older when they get older, they do it with one hand, and it had a song. My granddaughter, when she was. Uh, Eight, she learned this song, but she was too shy when we had our 100th anniversary. She didn't want to do it, but I'll do it. Uh. And you start going faster. And every, all the girls, they could do it one at a time, or they could do it, uh, they have their own ball, and they are doing a competition. One of the games that they would, the girls would be doing with the Siberians. And, uh, and, and, then, um, and then they do it with one hand, the older kid. And they, I'll do one with a real fast. I dropped it, so somebody else. <laughs> 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 and they do running little bit of running because 4th of July is coming. Maybe I have a, and, uh, instead of 4th of July event, they, I don't know what they would call it. Springtime, they used to come. I know why they didn't the springtime. In the springtime, Bering Sea, where there's ice, I, uh, I forgot what, it's the calmest. And surrounding village in, in Siberia will all get together, the singers and drummers and the guy, everybody will be getting ready, the uh, wrestlers and the uh, spear fighters and uh, 
ladies that exercise like this, going down, holding a little bowl with all four. There'll be all kinds of them. There'll be uh, toys that they don't watch in Olympics. And there's, at our camp, stepping stones, like, like this, go over these. And then they jump up and hit the rock. And who's going to do the most? And there's circle rocks about this big at our camp. I think they're used to uh, be events for only islanders uh, who want to work out at that end of the lake or over here is where the, and there's big rocks right here and they go next rock and jump and next rock and there was a ball this big and then if they want to go from here to, there'll be two guys or one guy that are doing this. And they'll push and land on that and do it. Nobody could do that anymore. And there's weight lifts at our camp. One big rock is like that, and that's called you walk. That almost looked like a man. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, they uh, play with the drums, uh, like an old man would play his drum. Like this, and the guys would go like. Like that. And there's another one too. And whoever gets tired will go away. Now I'll do, uh, uh, I'll sing, a, uh, and, and through history, they have songs, hunting songs, and I'll do the real easy one that I could have maybe somebody from up here uh, uh, a volunteer to do it. You know, when you're dancing in our cult, in a, where I come from, you're telling a story with your hands, like the Hawaiians and like other people. And uh, when basketball came around, they did, um, uh, an old man made a basketball song. I'll sing the song first, and then I'll do the motion. <laughs> Basketball and Naksa Kumanga, Basketball and Red, Hungang it Neha, Arakso, Hunganga, Anga Hangaya, Kanakilanga, Anga, Aya, Aya, Hangaya, Aya, Aya. And I'll sing and dance it uh, like the girls. They go like this, and the guys go like this. I'll do first course. The second time when they go, they express himself a little harder and the guys go a little ways down. It's real easy. You mimic, like, you, you hold the ball like this, you know, like that when you're dribbling with the tip of your hand. You're dribbling. You dribble the ball. You dribble the ball. Seeds to the right. Seeds to the left. Defense. Pick up the ball and make a basket. <laughs> and now I'll do it with singing. Ata kong on huang ha su hong o wei yang e basketball le nak sa ko mang basketball le red kong a hang e te ka arak lo hong a hang a hang e yang e. Kanak di langa, 
But if I were, but they, if they were a singer, I would be going, I'd say defense, I'd go, uh, uh, or I'd say it before I saw I'd say defense, <laughs> like that. And the guys would go, first they could go like that. Atakon Pangasu Mori Yang E Basketball and Naksahako Manga Basketball and Red Hungahang Eat Neka Araklo Angahang E Yang E Ganachtilanga I was going to let you guys, somebody, uh, volunteer and do that. We're running out of time. Maybe while I'm in here, I'll go ahead and do my, the modern one. My last homework for my grandpa. My elders, while I was growing up, were my professors. You know, we are built like computers. All the data in our brains through our lifetime comes when things, when somebody asks you and you look back and, oh, I've learned that. I had my ninth grade year in Sibonga. The first time when I came here was when I was still in high school. We, uh, there was a lady who was adopted by my grandparents to, during the TB pandemic who was the same age as my oldest auntie. And when she passed away, they, you know, long ago, they sent a lot of patients to Sitka. And lots of people, while they were waiting all over Alaska, they were, her name was almost there to go, but she died. So they adopted that minister as their daughter. She became, she died at the age of 90 something recently. But she was the one who to, let us raise money and we came here. You know, when you're a child, teenager, you think when we were seventh grader, we wrote a letter saying we want a school, we don't want to go boarding school. <laughs> and uh, we didn't have airport when we, we, were, we went to go see the governor, and we said to him, we wrote a letter to you. We wanted a school, <laughs> and we wanted an airport. And now, uh, we did get an airport. I had my ninth grade year. I thought all this time I thought I got cheated, but now looking at it, no. I got to spend more time with my elders, and I got to learn. I value my time now, and I'm happy. I was telling her while I'm here, I think of that. And my last, my grandpa taught me uh, how to, and my elders taught me how to uh, give me assignments to make dance movement uh, their way and honored me. My great aunt, uh, Mabel Tooley, she uh, uh, was a uh, eldest in our clan, who was a dance instructor, had my mom make these. Some of the beads are hers. No wonder she said, I'm going to take my beads, and so I'll always be there. Is there clinics? So I'll be always there with you. 
and uh, and I felt, and this one I got it, I seen this Siberian, her name was Olga, when I went, when I was asked to go demonstrate whistling communication in uh, south of Po, in, in France, south of Po, at Po, where the, uh, at that time I had no idea about global warming. And, uh, uh, and that's where I learned. And anyway, I met her. She spoke five languages and she was fluent. Gave me this and said, Elaine, wear this on special occasion. And I said, yeah, I will. I'm glad I found it when I was home and I decided to bring it and I thought of not wearing it. I decided to put it on. So, and I'm talking about our people and here. We're all language bearers of wherever we come from, and I'd like to. But anyway, the, my grandpa said, one time in our lifetime, um, oh, Naga, we uh, do songs. Uh, some of the songs that are given are just melody with no songs. The people who are appointed or given from the clan that makes the dance movements, they do these. But sometimes, just like carving, when we see something, something comes about, like that, you're turning on the TV, it comes like a flow. He tried to tell me, I tried to make it, uh, he said, make a dance movement, look around what's happening in the village right now, or in the, on the island, or in Alaska, or in the world, and make a movement. I didn't do it, so finally he said, no, never mind. It will come to you eventually. It doesn't want to come right now. If it does, it will come like a river with the same thing. When Amy talked to me, asked me to make that mask, you know, during the COVID, it was a very scary thing. And I thought, am I going to see Ellen? Uh, well, I seen Amy all right now and then before that. Am I going to see her too? Scary thing. Anyway, she, one day she asked me, Elaine, do you think people will make dance movement, dancing song? to COVID and said, I don't think so now. Uh, maybe my grandpa and my great uncle's time, they would because they composed a song about television, basketball, monkey dance, and somewhere they didn't make macarena though. <laughs> but then it kept haunting me, that song. And one day, I tried to kind of put it to that song, but it wasn't all there. But as the news were coming, as, and all of a sudden, for sure, just like opening the TV, it came. And it, we might take too much, we're a little late. You know, in the back, here's Alaska, and here's uh, actually this way. Uh, Siberia, U USSR, and Alaska. And in between, they're St. Lawrence Island. Our people, when I, I like I said earlier, you, you you learn like sometimes opening a data in your brain it comes. I went when I went like that when they asked me about global warming too, and when I'm doing my table that I have, and I said, gosh, no, you learn, I don't know how old, any time you learn. Anyway, uh, he said, uh, Russia they called the big land, what connects the continents to different countries. They say good or bad, modern or old, sickness or whatever comes through first from 
uh, it comes first or it comes last, either through the big land or through Alaska. And they were saying, but anyway, when the pandemic, it was like all the way to the other end of the world, to all the way to St. Lawrence Island, the first responders of the world, the whole world, they work, give their lives, just like the hunters, give their lives to us. And then their patients, some of them, they die. All the way from the other end to all the way to St. Lawrence Heim, same thing. And they go. And everybody from all over the world who know, who ask if they're Christians, if they're create, uh, who believe in the Creator or whatever, well, you know they all ask for protection from Him. And just like He's got the whole world in the palm of His hands, and it, palm of His hands, the whole world. And this is the first time I was thinking. I've been to Washington, D.C. when I repaired the Gut Parka. I, I don't know when they were first opening. The, uh, and when I was first time seeing more museum workers who helped me through the pandemic to keep me going. Otherwise, I could have lost my mind, probably scared, uh, scary thing. Um, anyway, I'll sing it and dance it. Ay, 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 ook my gloves. <laughs> ook, where are my gloves? Sorry. First time, um, this is Juno. I've been to Washington, D.C. And this is, uh, this is where I've heard they buried one of the mayors of Gamble here, and I'm going to be here 4th of July. Because my middle brother, who was my student when he was a junior high, that I've learned a lot of knowledge from the elders, besides growing up in my grandparents' home, further educate. While I was teaching, I was being taught by the elders where I asked him to come to help. And now, and Ay 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 I'll go up a little further. Ay, 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 <laughs> Thank you. This one, some of them, like this one, is walrus.